<gasps> get it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just don't like it, and I don't care. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm looking, and I'm checking. Hey, you I'm do you, Troy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It is. I yes. Thank you for that. But I'm just gonna not. Uh, I'm not gonna go there. Just gonna let that fly right by. Yeah. <laughs> let it fly. Let it fly by. Um. So you know, one of the things that I have um recalled is that, uh, or I have figured out. You know, I spend a lot of time um on my off hours listening to us um talk. And we are fun. I'm sorry. We are super, super fun. Hey, folks, you are uh, here hanging out for the, the pregame show, um, the, the pregame uh, Mutants and Master Capade that I like to uh, do just so you can make sure you can hear us and see us. Do me a favor when you, um, when you recognize my voice, um, you know, uh, compliment, um, I was going to say, crystal but i'll be hurt <laughs> something will happen um uh you know uh, share uh, one of your favorite moments of the program so i can see uh do that in chat uh hello to our youtube friends you are logging in this is troy um you know we're just hanging out and wow there's a lot of i don't know what's going on there's just something popular happening we're live now aren't we we are live we are live uh that or troy is just talking to people in his head that I mean, is, yeah, we've encountered both. That so. is true. You have, you have. I mean, like we're all here, right? This isn't just a dream. <laughs> this isn't just a thing that's happening in my head. If it is, I don't mind it. I will say I do not mind it. Looking for my chat and da -da 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 -da. Um, well, we haven't necessarily kicked off the actual program. Program. Um, I don't know what's happening, but there's some. Um, Something about today's show has attracted mm -hmm. a lot of people. That's probably Samantha. Yeah. Yeah, I think Clearly. so. Clearly. I think so. People understand star power when they see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Now my mom is probably there. Uh, Hi, mom. Your mom has logged in like 80 times. That's, <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of work for a mom that is right. uh, amazing. Uh, that is look, impressive. I, I put a strict cap on my contract. We can't have more than 12 people viewing. Oh, shoot. Shoot, everybody. Right. Uh, Otherwise, we lose our indie cred. Disperse among channels. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I'm going to open this up. Oh, here's the chat. And let's see. Hi, everybody. Um, can you hear me? And Can I hope you so, see our working. little, uh, you know, if you're paying attention, uh, and mm -hmm. Mercy knows you do, um, especially the Sean's, if the Sean's are hanging out, um, we'll probably hear about it. But, you know, we've got a, something coming up. I, I want to know if people can see it in our little starting screen. So pay attention to that. I'm not seeing mm -hmm. anybody chatting yet. Uh-oh. Troy, you sound like you're coming from the bottom of a well. I do. Are you stuck in a well again, Troy? I am, I am. That's oh, God, we got to go I'm find in. that friendly collie. Oh, yes, we can, Troy. Right. AJ Real, thank you, AJ. Um, AJ, are you hearing me uh, at the bottom of a well? <laughs> well, well, well. Don't put this on, AJ. This is about you, Troy. <laughs> no, right. AJ, it is all your fault, by the way. It's not a well, actually, Troy. It's just a <laughs> metaphorical well. <laughs> just a, Yeah, that, that would be the... That's where I keep my heart... <laughs> collection uh let's see here um excellent <laughs> you are a little quiet now that is something kevin that i do not hear often thank you i will bring my levels up thank you to everybody who is tuning in uh do mm -hmm. know that um today's show is amazing sean Beckin, i love you know so everyone's like hey um uh it is uh <laughs> Challenging you, you're a little quieter, and then Sean's like, "You're you are quieter than usual, but audible." <laughs> Sean, I'm gonna come over to your house with a microphone, like a megaphone, actually, and I'm going to sing you a song <laughs> out your bedroom window at five in the morning. Um, okay, well, so here's the deal. It is Mutants and Masterminds Monday, and uh, Troy's calling from Dementia X. Yes, Dan, that is <sighs> that you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you, I... you got me where I live. Yeah, honestly, right. You know, with that, <laughs> I'm, we're just gonna say. Oh, I don't like this because the next stage is throwing Troy through a portal that dissolves everything except his brain. 
Oh my god, is that how you became a disembodied voice? I was just gonna say. That, you know, <laughs> I, I'm kind of remembering my origin story. Troy, we've got to build you a giant man baby body to put you in the stomach of. You know, it's so funny. I walk around with a giant man baby mood, and so having having a body to you know, body to match. Yeah, that would make me it's, feel. You know, I'm making Ninja Turtle references. Um, I you know I don't know uh, a lot about the Ninja Turtles, but I understand that they are teenage. Yes. And they're mutant demons. Okay, so the thing is, Krang was a warlord from Dimension X until he was captured by the neutrinos and hurled through a dimensional portal that destroyed his body, leaving him only a disembodied brain, which is why he joined forces with the Shredder and shared Dimension X technology so the Shredder could construct for him a new body, which oh, looks mm -hmm. like a giant baby man. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. And then he but... rides around in its stomach with con Little control controllers. Levels. Well, everyone, welcome to the fan <laughs> podcast. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Yes, yeah, so welcome to my Ninja Turtles fan podcast. I'll just talk about pod <laughs> turtles all day. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could, uh, as Steve knows. Yes, and uh, you there's know. a reason he requests not to have booth duty with me anymore. <laughs> booth duties. <laughs> Who left the booth duty? Uh, hey everyone, I want to thank you for tuning in. Um, this is Mutants and Masterminds Monday. I'm the disembodied voice of Troy, and Michael Mendoza says Warlord Krang and Arnim Zola need to start a Abs of Face oh. fitness club. Mm -hmm. <laughs> abs of Face. Um, yep. We've got Crystal Frazier, we've got Steve Kenson, and we've got a friend who is joining us, Samantha Chapman. Now, there's something kind of cool that happened. Um, mm -hmm. Crystal and we were planning, literally, truly planning. I'm not just lying this time. We actually did some planning. <laughs> and uh, and I was like, oh, I gotta get, I gotta get a hold of Samantha. And I searched my email. I was like, we've talked before. We've actually exchanged emails in the past. Now I forget exactly why, even though I did read the thread earlier today and responded and give you a link. But um, uh, Crystal, um, talk about why Samantha's here and uh, and uh, what we're doing today. Uh, well, Samantha is one of our editors on Mutants and Masterminds, so we decided we needed to talk about the best ways game masters can describe the world to their players, and we thought if we're going to talk about communicating clearly, something Steve and I are terrible at, then we mm -hmm. need to have an editor <laughs> on to make sense yes. of us. <laughs> We've always needed an editor before, so yeah. why should we change now? <laughs> it's a so, good time. It's a great gig. I, I love working on Mutants and Masterminds. <laughs> so how long have you been with us now, Samantha? Oh, gee, a while. Um, I've been freelancing full time for three years. Uh, and I think I started working with Green Ronin a little bit before that while I was still at my mm -hmm. old job. So a little more than three years, maybe wow. three and a half. <laughs> So Samantha, are your super speed powers strictly limited to editing or do they apply to other aspects of your life? Because um, Samantha is also one of the fastest editors I have ever Am I really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I didn't realize, so you, didn't realize we'd drag you on here and compliment you in front of me. Like a shredder. Mm -hmm. Get it, a shredder. Get it. Oh. oh. <laughs> Look, we apologize for Troy. No, they don't. He's normally not allowed to interact <laughs> with other employees. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Only for this hour once a week. <laughs> then we put him back in the giant baby man body and... <laughs> right. He plots on, you know, ways to destroy the cosmos. My baby rage is strong. Um, Alex Thomas says, Samantha, I am so sorry if you've had to edit any of my words. <laughs> it's fine. It's really fine. You know, I have a question for you. Um... It is, I imagine editing to be sort of a wonderful and also just <laughs> arduously painful kind of thing. Like, and also maybe the dichotomy so, so, so rich, so powerful. It like, really is. Kind of like a feast or famine, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, how, how do you get through the, the more famine-y parts? Um. <laughs> the famine is in bad writing. Is well, that what well, is that where we're going? Actually, very <laughs> interesting, Samantha. You may actually really love the bad stuff because you can fix it. If you're reading it and there's nothing to do, it's like, come on, friend. There, there is a little bit of that, honestly. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this job if I didn't like taking something that's kind of good and making it really good. Yeah. Um, as long as 
I've sort of told people sometimes, usually either everything's great and they just need a, a, another eye as all authors do, as I do, as, as literally everyone does. Mm -hmm. um, because when you write something, you know what you were supposed to say. And so your brain actually fills in what you meant and not what you read, what you read. Mm -hmm. So it, it's actually incredibly difficult to catch your own mistakes. Um, sometimes there'll be a great story and the writing is just not very good. And that's the best, honestly, because then I could just really get in there and make it good and talk at the author and make sure <laughs> I have everything that they intended. Yeah. Um, and sometimes uh, the writing is fine and the story's not great. And that's when I can go in um, as a developmental editor, which is a whole different thing, and just and really try and brainstorm and and see what I can do to help get that up to the level. So as long as one of those things is good, I'm having a good time. A quick follow up. <laughs> um, so do you become kind of an editing, um, you know, junkie, and now you just walk around life and you just catch everything, like every a little ever. bit. Oh yeah, like menus. Mm -hmm. and... It's a little bit bad. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to turn editor brain off when you're just reading for pleasure, isn't it? Yep. It, yeah. It's and it's, it's sometimes it's basic stuff. I was reading an ebook the other day, um, and the italics were closed in the wrong place. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ruined the whole experience. Uh, John All right, what's worse? Oh, sorry, not sorry. closing out a quotation with punctuation mark or inappropriate use of quotation marks for emphasis. Oh, I hate quotation marks for emphasis. <laughs> you yeah. hate them? <laughs> All I remember quotation, is that <laughs> quotation marks for sarcasm are fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Oh, all I really remember is from the airport, the big locker that was for emergency supplies. <laughs> you have to wonder what that could even mean. Like, right. what, what is in there? I need to know. Um, so here's uh, John Polajek says, apologies in advance if you have to edit my upcoming work. Well, John, we have a task for Samantha. She's going to actually get in and she is going to edit all of the chat for every one of our programs live. <laughs> <laughs> so she'll edit some of your stuff. Oh, I'm that's sure. that's going to be some terrible eye strain. <laughs> yeah, mm. and also just some terrible. You will actually then witness how <laughs> terrible these people are to me. Uh, yes. No, they're not. They're all very, very, very good people. Um, no, but, we know at least one of them is nice to you, Troy. That is true. Right? <laughs> that is true. Um, oh, a question for you. And it's a pook, I think. That's probably the nicest person. Yeah. Um, no, he's been mean to us. Uh, uh, <laughs> do you? What's your most egregious? Like you come across it, you just rage out. You're just like throwing the book, or you, you punch your monitor. You just. Um, is it about capitalizing hero points? <laughs> no, I made my peace with that. <laughs> Crystal told me recently That's that. One. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want to call anybody out. I don't know who wrote the thing, but there was a page. There was a page in something I was editing. I don't even remember what book it was anymore, so I feel safe about this. Mm -hmm. But the 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 phrase "hero point" showed up three times, and once both words were capitalized, and once neither word was capitalized, and once one. "hero" was lowercased and "point" was uppercased. Wow, that is almost certainly my work. No, that last one almost has to be deliberate. <laughs> at that point you have to be like come on i do love that as as creators uh as you and crystal do you ever uh, put a little thing in there for the editor to like a little a little sort of poker a little like little booby traps in there <laughs> mm -hmm. like, yeah let's see if Just you can find this appropriate attention. use of there right <laughs> my my favorite that i found recently that just made me laugh uh so much um Crystal might remember this. Uh, it, again, I don't remember which uh, stat block it was because I've I've done so many now. Um, mm -hmm. But the character, I think it was like a spacesuit. It was supposed to have immunity to cold. Mm -hmm. L was missing. It was immunity to cod. <laughs> immunity to cod. <laughs> That's great. Mm -hmm. That is so good. Yes, oh. yes, I recall a, a character once who had a cod of honor for, for the same <laughs> reason. That is awesome. Um, yeah, I've uh, I have definitely sent out many an email, and it doesn't even come close to the artistry that we uh, that we you know kind of put into our uh, uh, tabletop role play content. Mm -hmm. But I send out you know, hey everybody, send me your screen shits. 
But like I said, this is exactly the kind of thing where you know it's supposed to say cold, so you can mm -hmm. read it 10 times and your brain fills in cold. Right, yeah, or, absolutely. Or native language is native language. <clears throat> yes. yes. <laughs> As many of our patrons have pointed out to me today. <laughs> yep, that's true, yes, that did, uh, yeah. His that. native language is English, by the way. Well, yes. Do we want to talk a little bit about uh, <laughs> a, a quick little um, uh, Patreon update? <laughs> We probably should. We, uh, yeah, so we just it. we just started the, the Golden Age Crime League, uh, who are you know the first generation of the Crime League who were active back in the forties, uh, led by August Roman, who is this week's release. Uh, so you get August Roman in his prime as a stat block, where mm -hmm. he is. I think it's a PL seven mastermind yeah. manipulative type. Like, not a big threat on his own, but he's the sort mm -hmm. of guy who has, like, seven contingency plans set in place all around him and an army of bodyguards. Yep. Yeah, he's a great sort of pulp era, like, mastermind mm -hmm. type. And people came out to vote for that, uh, for this. Ooh. Yeah, they, they were so mm -hmm. stoked. Very, very excited. <laughs> um, and now I'm still I... sad my contenders lost. I, they're literally the contenders. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm looking here, and every time I see the two Sean's pop up and chat very close to each other, I get a little nervous. I've got to make sure that they are not uh, forming the one big Sean, because then we're in some serious trouble. Thoughts on the Time Traveler's Codex revised edition going out with the references? Oh, uh, of course, Sean. Breckenridge Fortitude instead of Breckenridge uh, Fort. <laughs> you see, that's not an editing problem. That is a layout problem. Uh -huh. That's a find and replace <laughs> problem. Right, which is a find and replace problem. <laughs> also infamously known throughout the RPG industry as a The Wizard problem. <laughs> um, because there was once an edition of a D&D book where they decided that they would replace the word mage with wizard uh. <laughs> in the book. Uh. And so they searched and replaced all instances of, of mage and replaced it with wizard. Um, so it included things like 66 to wizard of damage. <laughs> that is so good. Uh -huh. That's wonderful. <laughs> yep. Oh, that is you know, so the, the uh, projected eye wizard spell, you know. You know, things like that. See, this is, this is why search and replace is a powerful tool that should be used <laughs> cautiously. I do remember signing I, up. I that. honestly can't remember if that was, if it was either Hal or I that made that mistake. So I'll go ahead and own it and say it was my dumb mistake. Mm. So it's my fault. You have to call it Forti or Fortitude Breckenridge now. Yes. You know, interesting. You to, uh, that's the rules. Uh, Jordan Taylor over on the YouTube says, um, uh, he was giving me the business um, uh, on uh, basically my bad jokes, but sorry, friends, that's what you get. That's all I got, the bad ones. Um, uh, and then suddenly came to life when we actually started talking about stuff. Uh, also said that he, you know, that they wanted to, uh, they wanted to do a, uh, they want to run a one shot for us. And I, that reminds me of a thing. Do you know we've got yes. a one shot coming up? We do. We do. Alex Thomas will be running one for us next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. I like that guy. He's, a, he's pretty nice. He's pretty yeah, nice he's pretty dude. cool. Pretty nice dude. Um, yeah, we're gonna send some information out. It's gonna be a blast. I think. Um, I think we're kind of picking our uh, uh, particular roles. Um, and I'm just letting you know, I'm going to act. Wait, nobody said I had to play with Troy. <laughs> <laughs> right, surprise! Right. It's your surprise <laughs> birthday party. <laughs> the present is me being present. Um, also, you know who else is going to play with us in that uh, one shot with Alex? Uh, Nicole. Alex. Rogers. Alex. Yeah, <laughs> Alex is going to be doing something. I think a little nefarious. We do kind of give him the business, and so I think that at least me. So we'll see what happens there. That is going to. Yeah, we're going to. Um, now, are we starting at the same time? I think we're starting a little earlier. Uh, are we starting earlier or going later? Going later, I thought. Yeah, but... that's what I thought too. You know, um, we'll figure it out. We don't know. Just <laughs> look and w look for us online. We'll appear there doing some role play stuff. No, we'll we, get a, we'll get details we, out to you. The, fa the fact that we actually know what we're doing next week is stunning. <laughs> it's I mean. unusual for us. I actually have the schedule right here that we made. No, right? It's awesome. That was. I got to get to work on some of this stuff. Yeah, that's right. 
Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Michael Mendoza says a pubic instead of public is a dangerous. Yup. Yeah. Anytime, anytime I work on anything involving public relations or, or <laughs> public policy, anytime public I will, speaking, I will do a search <laughs> to make sure. Yeah. Samantha, you just like hit the two big ones uh, as a person who kind of helps out uh, <laughs> you know, people who uh, are working on becoming elected officials and sometimes on a mm. on oh, public level. policy. That's yeah, a I'm... lot of pubic policy. The... Mm -hmm. <laughs> the good news is if you're talking about public exposure, it ends up being the same thing. <laughs> right. Same thing. Especially exactly. in politics. I mean. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> The politics, the pubic uh, policy is just very, it's a, it's a rough one for sure. Um, Alex Hummel says, uh, uh, that's great. Um, I, yeah, Alex, everybody knew what was going on except for me. Alex is like, I thought we were starting at the same time and going later. Okay, I get it. Uh, also, Alex says, uh, you, all, you all know what we're doing next week. I'm still writing the adventure. So, okay, great. <laughs> it's good to know hey, that we're too. all on yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm not writing this adventure. I'm writing a different adventure, but... <laughs> Yeah, so Scott Alford, welcome. Always good to see you. Um, and uh, Jordan, you're not going to get a look at that schedule. Everyone's like, "Can you show the schedule?" And that's, and that's uh, right here. Just, no, can you see it? Just pan to your right. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. yeah. in just hands. turn your camera around so you can right. see the other side. Um, so <laughs> yeah, that's happening. I'm really excited about it. Um, I think it's going to be super fun, and uh, I think it'll also be very theatrical for some people so um <laughs> for people who are just popping in i see people are arriving we are uh we are just picking up steam this is something um chat bot is uh has congealed and they are now legion and they are very much interested in what samantha has to say about editing and all that yes. good stuff and some oh, no. good stuff uh i have some questions for you um okay will is there a thing that you like the the constant struggle of kind of finding a company that understands how to work well with editors. Like, is there, what are some crimes that, uh, that people do or the thing that you as, as the, you know, as the expert editor, as the editor that speaks for all editors, uh, on this <laughs> green earth, what are the, right. give us a little insight into sort of that process. And, um, well, I've actually been very lucky. Um, most of the companies that I've worked with have treated me great. Uh, I, I've never had to chase people down for payment like I've heard a lot of people do. Um, honestly, if there's one thing, you know, to make your freelancer happy, it's it's pay on time. Pay them, yeah. <laughs> um, I, it's just, it's funny to mention the, you know, as the editor who's, who speaks for all editors, because there is not. <laughs> um, it's just so funny to me sometimes because so much of English, especially, but I'm sure all languages, but so mm. much is style. Mm. Um, you know, it, are you using an Oxford comma? I don't, I, I care, but I don't necessarily care if it's not wrong as mm -hmm. long as y you know what you're doing and you're doing it consistently. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have told people over and over again that if you're wrong consistently, it's better than being right some of the time. So, Samantha, how important is it to have a style guide? Um, it's a really interesting question. Uh, I definitely have my Chicago style guide that I had for a particular job. A uh, mm -hmm. particular company wanted to use Chicago. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll refer to it when I'm not sure um, whether something is correct or not. Um, but all, there's also a lot that I throw out. Um, there's a lot of Chicago that I personally don't use. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't necessarily matter that the style guide says one thing, especially if a different style guide says something else. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, maybe it's more important to have multiple style guides and, and look at them and see what sounds right to you. Mm. I, I often mean, find any it, style is, guide is all uh, is just the biggest document and the latest and the most art like it's totally uh, behind their you know all the references yeah are, yeah it's uh, oh and of course you know if i'm working for a company that has their own style then of mm -hmm. course that's what you do um but you know if i'm working with a private author or if i'm writing my own um projects yeah it, it like i said it's less important to follow a specific guide and even less important to be 
technically correct if it sounds good and your your writers your readers can tell that you're doing it on purpose mm -hmm. but the internet tells us that technically correct is the very best kind oh of i know <laughs> that was just one episode <laughs> Crystal, sorry, and I was uh, talking about, you know, the, the style guides always being out of date, but you were going to say a thing. Oh, just in general, like, how how important are company style guides? Mm. Like, no, a com yeah, a company style guide is, is, I think, a lot more important because that means that no matter who is writing and who is editing, you're going to end up with that consistency. Mm -hmm. um, Crystal mentioned hero points, and that was something that I was I was <laughs> ribbing her about a little bit. Um, because I always wanted to capitalize them and a lot of authors wanted to capitalize them, but I was referring back to the deluxe heroes handbook where they were not we capitalized. Don't. Yeah. So choices as were much made in that book. <laughs> as much as I would have preferred it, <laughs> um, it's a lot more important to be consistent than mm -hmm. to just sort of go back and forth and do whatever. So Such consistency. <laughs> <laughs> Consistently inconsistent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my concern about style guides is that every, so I've done one for nearly every studio that I've worked for and that people just refuse to wear the clothing I'm suggesting like I want like a <laughs> feather and some you know tap shoes different and, style yeah, right yeah, different. Oh, is this a, oh. not not everyone can pull off your style That's, you're thinking of a dress code Troy oh oh yeah. fashion has advanced since the zoot suit <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have that song in my head <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, here's one. Uh, uh, Sean says, "Oh, I'd imagine it." Uh, I love it when a Sean starts out. I imagine a big problem, uh, <laughs> and one I've heard Green Ronin and freelancers confess to is delivering more words than requested. <laughs> Ooh, mm -hmm. that must be yes. What about one, trimming huh? text? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I will say as a developing editor, which is. You Sorry, know, I didn't hear the question. Oh, oh. We, yeah, we, uh, Samantha got frozen for just a bit, but she's back. Uh, Sorry about that. Go for it, Crystal. Sorry. Oh, uh, Troy was just asking about uh, the problem of writers delivering too much text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was saying, as a developmental editor, which is most of my job, uh, that's that's almost as bad as underwriting because <laughs> it mm -hmm. means. Uh, we have a specific page count of our book that we're trying to hit, or if it's just like an article or a two-page spread or something like that, then yeah. it has to be pretty consistently sized. We need a set number of words to work with the, the illustrations and staff blocks and all of that we have. Yeah. So having more text means your developer or your editor has to go in there and figure out what's essential and just <laughs> slash out whatever they can to get it to fit to a, a page mm -hmm. or... Is that harder or column. easier, Samantha? Is that, is that a, a thing where you're like, you know, you just have no problem sort of, you know, exiling these bits of just pure genius, you know? To... <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of like being able to reword things in a way that's mm -hmm. the same but shorter. Mm -hmm. um, and But it depends. It definitely depends on the author. You know, a, a lot of people will just take 20 words to say what they could say in five. Uh, and when an that makes it easy right. <laughs> I'm um, a if you cut out the, the passive text you usually <laughs> cut down like 10 percent of your oh yes, yep mm -hmm. easily yes, yes yeah um you know if someone is going and is doing and is like you can cut a lot of those is's out and mm -hmm. just change the tense um so there there are a lot of little tricks <laughs> yeah and i'm curious can... chris go ahead sorry go curious ahead. crystal uh if you have an under count page can you just like add extra images or do you really have to fill I that mean, back up <laughs> no because images are expensive but mm -hmm. text is cheap comparatively, <laughs> comparatively. and Picture, I mean, pictures are actually worth a good deal more than a thousand words these days yeah yeah art is hard and art is slow art mm -hmm. takes you know at least a couple of days to send the request to your artist get sketches approve the sketch turn it around we're very get very, final very, art. very 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 cold very 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 cold that is pretty easy yeah or i can go in and i can add a little bit of flavor or fluff mm -hmm. and two lines worth of text in 10 yes. minutes yes. <laughs> yeah we're we're infamous for the the phase of of development and production that we call fill text mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Which is is where the the production department will go and give us a you know complete you know initial layout of the book and highlight all of the spots where we're like we need two lines of text here 
Mm -hmm. We need three lines of text here. Yeah. Yep, because um, you you want your headlines, your major headlines at the tops of pages, and yeah, you don't want to break a stack sense. block across a column. So you just have to go in and fill in, mm -hmm. like Steve said, two lines of text here, or cut three lines there, or... Or five pages yeah. of a Tolkien-esque song that, uh, <laughs> you know, in another language that I just make up on the spot. No, Troy, stop submitting those. <laughs> we are not to, publishing those. I really want it to work. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, Corey asks a really great question. Is there mm -hmm. something that would make you refuse a project? Um, the one lesson that I learned the hard way is do not accept a project that's not complete yet. Uh -huh. um, it's one thing for like proofreading, but I had a, an early, early in my career, um, I had a book that the author said, oh, it's mostly done, um, but it's not quite finished yet. Can I send you what I have? Um, and I said, sure, because I needed work and I didn't know better. Uh, and it turned out that he had written like a chapter uh, and and consistently kept like it it became How is a obvious mostly done it became obvious over the course of the nine months that I was working on this that he was writing and then as I was finished editing each piece that he sent to me he would send me whatever he had finished up to that point um, oh, and that God. that made it extremely difficult to comment on anything because he also wanted developmental edit oh, so he wanted no. my opinions and oh, and no. i kept trying to oh. tell him i can't comment on this because i don't know where you're going right <laughs> yeah. yeah your romance oh, that... country western space adventure from, <laughs> yeah, from the deep blue sea is really rough to kind of yeah. so so that that's the rule that i have right now is the the hmm. text has to be in a completed draft form <laughs> Okay, well, I've got a novella here. Well, I've got I've got three chapters from the middle of my novella. <laughs> we've taken a digital library and we've scrambled it. We would like to see. Um, let's see. We have another really great question, Samantha. How do you handle made up words, especially ones that are not human or very uh, flagugatory? Um, I've I mean I mostly come into contact with that like through role playing games, so. It usually it's just the name of something or or it's like a, an exclamation um mm -hmm. but i i don't really have a problem dealing with them um i'm not entirely sure what that would mean well you know i'm, I'm thinking a little bit of like the um uh it, it, how do you style guide or check or edit something that is you know kind oh of, i see yeah sort of these made up words that are sort of like like you're saying like an expletive or a language or mm -hmm. a spell or something you know yeah so i like i keep saying as long as it's consistent you know you're the author you are making up this word so it's your word um mm -hmm. so if i see it you know and there's a ck in 17 instances and there's just a k in another 18 i'm gonna call you or, or email you and say hey which one of these do you want and then i'll make that change for you gotcha mm -hmm. hey I wrote just so are you, everybody are you ever tempted to put people on on in uh, apostrophe jail when it comes to make up, made up words like you get you get oh. one maybe <laughs> like a... within the middle of a word right uh, Actually, quick, no friend. i have a great question for you real quick hold, you've been editing role playing sec. hold oh uh, I'm, I'm sorry um sorry youtubers you get to hang out and watch us as we scramble to figure out why <laughs> facebook has uh, decided to um oh no oh no we're facebook gonna, we're why are you and oh, we loved I you, know. Facebook. I, I mean, that's not true, well, but I we know. used you. <laughs> it's not true when you know it, but. And yeah, no, we've talked some mad crap about you, Facebook, but. Uh... You're awful, Facebook, and we hate you. Yeah, but at least do the thing you're meant to right. at do. At least do the thing you're supposed to right. be doing. Do the one thing you're built to do. Yeah, you have one job. Uh, what are you, honestly, what you, are you too good to do your job, Facebook? <laughs> exactly. Uh, I do look what are we paying you for? Oh, wait. Yeah, exactly. Only oh, our awkward. every waking <laughs> moment. <laughs> <laughs> do please mind my life for all the things oh we're back i see some uh, yay oh good i see some folks yeah can't explain what happened there um i can oh. with pride and joy say it wasn't me <laughs> <laughs> nope we're gonna blame facebook this time not definitely me. facebook that's all zucky we're back Hello, next AJ. time Hi, Scott. yeah next time we're gonna blame twitter oh yeah they suck too um let's see uh good stuff okay uh oh, so... hi sorry here's my cat <laughs> oh, oh. Hi, kitty. 
required. Hello. Hello. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Bye. She's so <laughs> fluffy. Nope. You're liking this too much. Yeah, I think the internet did collapse on us. The I think that honestly, Facebook was trying to edit out some of this stuff. And uh, guess what? <laughs> you lose Facebook because we're back. Um, uh, Crystal, you were uh, teeing up a question. Oh well, yes, you've been editing. Uh, you've been editing RPGs for a while now. Uh, what's the maximum number of X's you've seen in a single fictional name? <laughs> <laughs> Not. Not that many. Um, mostly probably because <laughs> you are, are making sure that that doesn't happen. I think I think my cap right now is four, but not all in a row. I, no, not all in a row. It was like a <laughs> dragon's name with a couple of apostrophes mm. thrown in. Sure. <laughs> dragons are the worst. Oh right. That, that stuff can be fun, but yeah. Yeah, they're either terrifying or very phlegmy. I, you know, I will say as as a reader. I don't pronounce things a lot of the time. If I hit a fantasy <laughs> name that I don't know how to pronounce, I just go like A, and then that's, <laughs> I'll like refer to them in my head for the entire rest of the book. That's oh no, my brain comes to a screaming. <laughs> too. Like I'll, and then I'll hear somebody say it, like if we're at a convention or something, I'll be like, that's it, isn't it? That's how I, you say that? Yeah. I once got to the middle of book three of a five book series pronouncing a character's name wrong because I transposed letters the first time I read it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do that all the time. I do love the battle of the people who read um, the Game of Thrones. Uh, <laughs> it, it, they get together at a convention. They're like, no, it's Arya. No, it's Arya. You know, like it's really <laughs> funny. Um, Stan Brown asks, what's the number of apostrophes in a single name, like do you have a? I love that we're just like, who are the who are the apostrophe criminals? <laughs> who are we calling out today? <laughs> right. No, I I feel like that's sort of fallen off at least from oh. from where I've been. It, mm -hmm. It's not something I've seen a lot. Um, a lot of the, actually, like a lot of the novels that I get lately are the sort of new literary RPG genre that's that's i didn't know about until oh. people started hiring me mm -hmm. um so that. like i've literally done a few different book novels about characters who are within like an rpg setting kind mm -hmm. of like there's one about a girl who's going to battle school and like all of their like uh, like she has statistics and she has like equipment <laughs> but it, like mm -hmm. it's not a game within the context of the book Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so it's it's been really interesting, honestly. Huh. Like I didn't know that this was a thing, but apparently it is. Hmm. That can be kind of cool. That's very yeah. interesting, Samantha. Uh, when you look across sort of your your body of work and the stuff that you have done for the various, uh, I mean, like it must be. I, I just am kind of realizing what a fantastic vantage point to see what the pulse is like what's happening out there in the zeitgeist um do you see that kind of stuff happening and do you notice those kinds of trends and patterns um i think it's more that i like i get that particular strain because i'm listed um as somebody who does rpg work ah. mm -hmm. um so I, I'm not really sure, you know, how prevalent it might be, or like, am I getting all of the instances and there's only like five, or right. are there a whole bunch of them and I'm getting a few? Mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely an interesting development to see this sort of new strain. Um, I just think I think a lot of people who are sort of coming of age and starting to write and and self publishing. Mm -hmm. um, have just grown up on really intricate role-playing games, whether it's computer games or tabletop sure. games. Yeah. They have a lot to play with. I mean, I'm guilty of that. Yeah. I, I make I make stat blocks for the characters I'm writing when I write them. <laughs> right. That, yeah, I know a lot of authors who do, you know, and a lot of, of uh, fan fiction authors who got their start, you know, writing about fan fiction for video games. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. You know, or things like that. So, so I mean, the they're they're talking about talking. a gaming context. Fifty Shades of Grey was fanfic, right? Yes, it was. <laughs> it was. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Not gaming fanfic, but it was. Yeah, no, were, that was, yeah Steve, was... were you at the fan fiction panel that I I did at GFGR? Or I'm was not that sure. I don't think so. I did a whole panel about about fan fiction and how it relates mm -hmm. to <laughs> to the and community. Did you just get that up there and like great. no? I mean, oh, I started the joke. fan fiction. So jokes, so jokes. Fan fiction Don't... is wonderful. Yeah, I might I start writing fan fiction. Absolutely, people are gonna. I think. Me. I think we all did. <laughs> I mean, at one point or another, right? Are you talking about my journal? 
Um, you know, I mean, the, and the funny thing about is, my Sailor Moon fanfic from high school. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is that that RPGs are kind of fan fiction oh, in yeah. their own fashion. You know, be. in the in, I mean, in that you're creating something that isn't an established world or property mm-hmm. or things like that. Say, especially if you have a licensed game. You know, if, mm-hmm. if you're taking yeah. like there's an there's an Avatar: The Last Airbender game coming out, which I've mm. been oh. dying to do an Avatar <laughs> campaign. <both>. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, and in a form that's fan fiction is here's this world and you're going to add something to it, but you're also going to take from the original source and create mm-hmm. something new. You know, I, I, I tend to go um, with a the easy joke because I'm simple and easily amused. Uh, but you know what's interesting is that um, uh, it is all fanfic. It literally like right? what that is is you know creating worlds and opportunities <laughs> to interact and all of that stuff and you hope that you're triumphant and all these mechanisms and things are just really a, a, a sort of tool to get you there um i have a question i've got two questions up one is um do you ever have a word that just has a really bad mouth feel and you're like out out with this like for me it's <laughs> delectable that makes me want to puke <laughs> I really well, don't. I, <laughs> I know a lot of people have problems with certain words that I'm not going to say because I don't want to torture people. You're talking uh, about moist? You're talking yeah, about moist, aren't you? Yeah. Right. But it was Crystal me. does want to torture people. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Only downside of this job is I can't torture people enough. <laughs> we got to get some joy for sure. But so you, you are immune to, um, to that. To that. I mean, I'm thing. sure there are. Um, but it's it, I'm not generating any right now. I think they're probably like in context things that are uncomfortable. But you know, I, I am really one of the things that I am come to learn is that you know I, I always think that editing is just sort of this blood sport where you just try and <laughs> cut and change and all that. And I realize <laughs> that's more about me than it is about the craft. And mm-hmm. that you really come out there. Are I was some... gonna say, Troy, you also consider baking a blood sport. So I really do. It gets rough around my place (laughs) around Christmas time for sure. Um, The other question here is uh, uh, for those who've never actually met Troy in person, he's like seven feet tall and covered in scars, Mm -hmm. baking scars and all baking scars, all baking and kind of wooden spoon splinters. And yeah, it's a mess. Uh, Only got seven fingers left. (laughs) That's true. That's true. (laughs) And three toes for some reason. I don't even know why. Um, let's see, uh, Sean, one of the Sean's says, uh, the Sean of the Duggan variety asks, uh, uh, curious, uh, do you go through and check their math on stat blocks and yes. do you still use Hero Lab? Yeah, I was going to say Samantha is amazing. I don't have Hero Lab. <laughs> oh, we should get you Hero Lab. Yes. Probably should, yeah. No, the funny, <laughs> the funny thing is I, I actually am really bad at mutants and masterminds. <laughs> um, the the, the third edition that. is better, but I I just don't have a particularly good head for roll for D twenty. Um, mm-hmm. I uh, my level is like about fate. Like I like having like four or five <laughs> granular things, and mm-hmm. um, but no, I mean I don't have I don't have to know every intricate detail of the system to double check that you know one plus two plus three is six. <laughs> Um, so I get my calculator out and I, mm-hmm. I check all the things and I check that, you know, de- um, athletics is going off of strength and that the number is mm-hmm. correct. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you make sure that the attacks listed on the main stat block are the same as the same attacks ones. listed in the yep. mini stat blocks. Because cut and paste is a <laughs> thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and when you're yeah. when your developer is also doing the layout, you end up with the, a lot of the <laughs> mistakes repeated. But yeah, the the thing that I don't want to have happen is that uh you know a group of gamers gets their hand on the book and it doesn't make sense and it ruins their night because then they're all arguing Aww. with each other. But the but gamers love that. <laughs> anyway, anyway, regardless, but let them have their fun. But a, a really um kind of a phenomenal look into your motivations. I mean, you literally you are you are um, creating a user experience. You're doing UX UI stuff. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that's. Uh, um, you know, I'm just saying, Samantha. Um, I I just think I'm falling in love. Um, <sighs> you know, platonically. Well, you know, um, editors are the absolute unsung heroes oh God, of publishing yes. because literally no one goes, "Wow, this <laughs> book is so well edited." Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, but they'll tell you if it's not. Yes, True. they will. Yeah. 
It's definitely a, an invisible kind of job. It is. If you're doing that, the job well. But do you, you like know? that? That's one of those things that, that- so one of the things that sort of makes me paranoid is you know nobody's perfect i'm not perfect i go through everything as many times as i can reasonably and also turn the book around um and not lose my mind Mm -hmm. um but you know i i I definitely worry that like some typo somewhere is going to get through and then Mm -hmm. someone's going to look at the book and go Mm -hmm. oh this is awful there's somebody somebody totally missed this was this even edited like yeah you just (laughs) did the 16 that i fixed Mm -hmm. right of course and and we all know, I mean, everyone who works in publishing, our, our experience is that you work on a book for months, you work incredibly hard on it, and the very first thing that someone will say <laughs> as, as the book has out, been out for 10 minutes yep. is, hey, did you see this terrible typo on page three? But you know what's funny about that, though? Oh, where, where the typo is in the title at the top of the page. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. 24 <laughs> point bold font. Yep. Oh, that hurts. I yes, yep. I know that story. Um, we've got some great questions. Matthew Tyler is uh, doing the thing that Matthew Tyler loves to do, and I have to say this, or he will continue to repeat it and will never oh. stop. Oh no, uh, Matthew. You know, okay. Troy. The more you do this, the more you encourage him. I'm just saying, like when I look at, I'm like, oh look, 50 people have no. It's Matthew Tyler who would like me to say <laughs> uh, regarding last week's live stream, and this is hilarious. The callback, and this is just a wonderful little meta moment for our friend Samantha. I'm just saying, Matthew, she would edit this out if she could. Uh, nay, shocked I was when I said, beware the Ides of March, indeed, and no one got the reference to Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. Oh, we did. <laughs> <laughs> we we didn't. I think we actually made the reference earlier in the program or something I'm proud, mm-hmm. but i love you matthew tyler thank you do never change just keep yeah, on I mean, keeping on it's not about the stabbing it's about the coming together to stab to groups. stab That's exactly right. yeah exactly exactly <laughs> it's about friendship uh and unity and collaboration yes. um it's about the dictators we stab along the way away exactly Ooh, tater tots i want tater tots <laughs> um let's see <laughs> scott asks for you samantha when it comes to accepting a novel or a short story what things do you prefer to see that would make you accept the submission as a, as opposed to what you dislike seeing? Right. Okay. Um, I have, uh, all right. Uh, I have not been in my career long enough to really be able to turn stuff down just because I don't like it. Ah. <laughs> I'll be mm-hmm. honest with that. Um, it's, no, it's not a place you get to very often. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, and it's so difficult to tell. I mean, a lot of, like, I, I use a site called ReadZ, uh, and they'll let you submit a, a sample to send to the editor. Um, and a, a lot of the time, it's just very hard to tell from something so short, you know, what, mm-hmm. what the actual job is going to be like. Mm-hmm. Um, so you really, you just want to make sure to have as much detail uh, about what you need as possible. Uh, if you're not sure what kind of service you need, uh, ask because we're always very happy to, to help you figure it out. Um, I don't want to make anybody pay extra money for something that they're not going to use. You know, if mm-hmm. you don't want to do any rewriting, I don't want you to pay for a level where I give you a whole bunch of ideas on how to rewrite stuff. Um, know how many words your story is. Uh, page counts are a little bit meaningless. Some, sometimes people use them. I used to use them, uh, mm-hmm. but word counts are just a lot more precise. So just know what you have uh, and present that as clearly as you can. And then that way I can give you a quote that's clear and accurate and we can go from there. I will say if you as a writer get the opportunity to get feedback from a professional editor, take it. <laughs> um, because all too often, especially in you know, the freelance business, there's no time for rewrites. Uh, in you know we would love to have second drafts from authors, but you know often production times just don't allow for it. Mm. So if you would get the luxury of getting a shot at rewriting, take it because my best opportunities to grow as a writer have always been when I've had an editor be willing to say, "So you do this thing, you might want to <laughs> consider not doing it anymore." Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, <know>? I... <sighs> This is embarrassing to talk about, but I got my real big break after a writer, or sorry, after an editor sat me down and is like, you've got good ideas, but 
you're terrible about passive voice. And I just looked at her in the face and I'm like, what's passive voice? <laughs> we were talking and, about, God bless her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she walked me through it and I'm like, oh, I do do that a lot. Yeah, but that's how I talk. We were talking, sorry, we were just really quick. We were yeah. talking about fan fiction and how we all, got, mm -hmm. we all get our start this way. I had written a really terrible self-insert fan fiction because we all did when we were 14. Sure. Um, and somebody took the time and sent me like a two page email of like, this is the stuff that's good. And this mm -hmm. is the stuff that you should work on and the stuff that you maybe shouldn't be doing. And I like bawled my eyes out because somebody oh. was so mean. And mm -hmm. then like a week later, I'm like, they Wait. spent a lot of time <laughs> telling me how to get yeah. better. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It was incredibly yeah. nice of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. You bring up my, that's my big crime, the passive voice stuff, because I think I, I do a lot of, I try to do a lot of placating or sort of like introducing a big idea, but in a really nice mm -hmm. way, you know, like. It's, yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, we all start out writing how we speak. We, we reproduce our normal right. speech patterns because that's how we're used to thinking. And the thing is, when you're speaking, you insert a lot of filler words because you don't necessarily know what you're going to say next. You have to kind of yeah. spin your wheels for a second while your mm -hmm. brain catches up. Or you try yep. to encapsulate the nonverbal aspects of the mm -hmm. speech. Like, you know, really, I, I, to emote at someone silently is really the hard thing to sort of describe. <laughs> Um, uh, oh, but it's so easy to receive. Yeah, exactly. Right. Your disembodied voice. Um, you know, I don't get very far. My my nonverbs <laughs> are real are real rough. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Samantha, I had a question for you. You know, uh, specific to kind of what uh, Crystal's talking about, sort of that editing the speaking voice. Uh, my question for you is: Do you do live editing? Like, um, like let's say someone does a like a little live stream every week and. They do a lot of talking. Like, can you can you help that person um, to maybe? No, you know, I, I don't think that's something I could do. What if we gave mm -hmm. him a shot collar and gave you the remote? <laughs> right. Yeah. What about? No, wait, I was a little too excited about that. That came out a little. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not what I meant. Came out a little too strong there, Charlie. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, a little bit. Shocking, little really. Bit. Um, here's a question uh, from Alex Thomas, who also says uh, Reedsy is a great platform and that uh, Alex uses that for their freelance editing as well. I did not know that, Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you would think he would edit himself some nice comments about me, but nope. Uh, let's see. Alex says, uh, to piggyback on what Steve said, take that feedback and really appreciate it. Don't get upset with excellent constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, or if you get upset, get upset in private and then think yes. about it later. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, you cannot control your first reaction to anything. You can no. control how you act based on that reaction. Yes. Yes. Do do not reply to edits that you receive within the within the day, much less yeah, within the hour. Yeah, yeah, no. When has that ever been a good idea and why have I Actually, done it every time? No, this is a great point to bring up. Samantha, do you have any advice for people who don't necessarily know how to tell constructive criticism apart from just being critical? Mm. I'd is say generally, if somebody is offering an alternative, it's probably constructive. And that's, mm -hmm. that's you know, that's, that's a general rule. It, it's the internet. People can yeah. be mean about anything. Um, but if someone is just telling you, oh, this sucks, well, that's not helpful. <laughs> like you're right. not, if you're go, if you're telling me specifics, you know, the more mm -hmm. specific they're being, you know, if you point to, you know, in chapter 23, when these mm -hmm. two characters are having conversation, I don't understand why character A is reacting this way. Mm -hmm. Even if there's not, you know, a, an alternative suggestion, that's constructive because it's pointing out exactly what you may need to tweak. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, and just people be nice. You know? <laughs> Don't just tear somebody apart. If you're if you're writing, you know, a screed of five pages of this sucks and this sucks and this is bad and this is awful, you're not helping anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, and also, just sort of the whole notion of the difference between ad hominem, like the person who wrote this mm. needs to die in a fire. Like that's just actually <laughs> probably not super. Oh I good, mean, you got my email. <laughs> <laughs> I did indeed. And uh, while I may not die in a fire because I have no body, some of the other suggestions, I'm going to do that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Nate Robbins says, uh, uh, what is, uh, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm thinking, is it sad, my friend? What is sad? What is said is my writing is trash, but my storytelling has been said to be epic. Do I get a ghostwriter? Oh, that's a great question. So, hmm. 
maybe not all the chops, but a great sort of world building kind of thing. Uh, there's actually a lot of work. I won't say a lot of work, but there are jobs out there specifically for world building. Mm -hmm. uh, those exist in the RPG community. They Video exist games. in fiction communities. They exist in television writing, in game yep. writing. Yep. Uh, because like, like you said, there are a lot of people who are great at designing worlds or building ideas who aren't necessarily great at delivering on uh like prose right yeah yeah. So, yeah i think that's that's particularly true in the in the rpg business mm -hmm. you know yeah. there there's so many different kinds of writing uh you know from from you know narrative prose to world building to uh adventure writing which is a an art unto itself mm -hmm. very you much know. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, some people are good at particular things and sometimes it's good to play to your strengths. Sometimes it's good to learn where your weaknesses are and try and improve them. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I, I'm reading here, you know, yeah, you, well, uh, go ahead, please. If, oh, if people are interested in doing more world building or world design stuff, uh, it is great to learn more about like how civilizations develop, how you know, ah. big, big picture history and sociology mm. elements. And mm -hmm. it helps to get really good at organizing your material and your thoughts and cross-linking. Mm. Uh, like a program like Scribd is great for keeping track of your notes and setting it up so your notes can refer back and forth to each other. Yep. That's great. You know, I was going to mention too, you know, uh, Crystal, when you were talking about it, it reminded me too of sort of a, I would say a newer, mm -hmm. uh, a kind of a newer development and, a, and an important one, culture checking, like mm -hmm. giving something mm -hmm. a culture yeah. read to make sure that you're yeah. not appropriating your, I mean, like, and yep. that's, that's a, uh, Samantha, is that something that you have done as well? Or is that? Uh... It is something I explicitly do not do because I don't have training in it and I'm not qualified. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen called sensitivity reading uh, yes. is what I generally yeah. 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 Um, and no, I. Cultural consultant. Hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like. He's very excited about cultural sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Check our culture. Um, I appreciate it. But no, but that that's something I specifically don't do because I, you know, I'm sure you can see I'm a white lady you know, in mm -hmm. America. I don't know all the nuances. Um, and I will try to point out if you may need additional. <laughs> hi. Sorry. <laughs> um. But now, you know, that that takes a, a different set of skills than mm -hmm. the one that I have. And it's very important. Something to be said about one of the biggest contr you know, contributions that we could we can make uh, as white people is to not presume expertise in an area and yeah. allow. Yeah, yeah. And definitely. Yeah. I, said, uh, I try to keep up. I, I try to be able to flag things, um, but it's it's not my job. Yeah, it's a different yeah. job that somebody else mm -hmm. should be doing. Uh, Scott, uh, you know, we we are we have five minutes. How in the heck did that happen? <laughs> you have edited an hour of my so, life away. Samantha mm. is charming. Absolutely right? charming. I didn't charming. expect so many YouTube questions. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, I mean, people are very. Uh, this is a good question, and I don't want to leave Scott hanging because Scott is just one of our regular pals, and I, <laughs> I value the question, and, and it's really, truly a serious, not serious, but you know, mm -hmm. for me, serious. Uh, uh, Sean, or Scott, rather, Sean. Get out of my head, Sean. Um, Scott says the, the most common criticism I get regarding a novel I'm trying to publish is, I like it, but I don't love it. How would you improve this sort of comment from an editor as it's slowly getting disheartening and getting the oh same boy. thing over and over? You know, that's true. Mm -hmm. And we do talk a lot about in this, of like how to treat your editor well. And we know that's important and you want to kind of do that stuff. But how do you coach an editor to give you the stuff that you need to make, you know, to get the love? How do you get the love? Oof, wow. That, yeah. That's a little twisty. I think the question kind of went a couple places. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's really tough because, um, I mean, my first thought was that if, you know, if, if I like it, but I'm not in love with it, there's probably places where I would make changes. Like there are probably mm -hmm. things that I'm thinking, Oh, but it would be even better if we did this and that and the other thing. Um, and I'm not, I mean, mm. I guess if that's so, if that's what you're getting from the editor and you want to have that more developmental approach, um, maybe one thing you can do is just sit down and talk, talk it out. You know, if you're getting a lot of your mm -hmm. uh, feedback 
back and forth with te- with email or, or text, um, that's really useful. And that's how I mostly do my job. Uh, but sometimes these are just things that you have to do in real time and, and brainstorm. And mm-hmm. um, maybe that's maybe that's a service. You know, I, I do that as I can do a a web chat as a, as an additional service because it, it is Smart. still work. It is still something, you know, that that's worth something. Um, but yeah, I, if if you're having trouble getting specific answers um, and your editor isn't giving that to you, um, maybe it's time for another look. Maybe you need a different a different perspective. Maybe somebody else can give you some more more specifics and more ideas yeah like mm-hmm. sometimes not every therapist is going to connect not every coach yeah is you know uh, and it's, yeah. Go ahead, you were talking earlier about developmental editing versus copy editing so yeah this might they're be a very different yeah. yeah very different yeah, this might I, be a situation where you need to find a developmental editor and i wonder scott have you read the question you asked us to the <clears throat> editor because it's very evocative <laughs> and it makes you know it's uh, it's some there's something there there and if you've read yeah. that to them and they didn't respond in a way that they understood it then yeah it's time to you know, maybe you know and it's more. difficult because it's not cheap i mean yeah. this is this is the biggest problem that i mm-hmm. have as a freelancer is that i price people out because this yeah. is what I do and I have to value the work that I do. Yes. But I also completely understand that if you're a single person writing an RPG, you know, adventure, you probably don't have $500 to drop on this, you know? Um, so it, it's difficult. And when you've already spent a lot of money, I can, I totally understand not wanting to start all over. And this is uh, finding other writers who are willing to do copy yes. trades with you yeah that helps a lot it's what i've yes. done in the past that's true writers groups can be helpful in receiving yep. some of that developmental feedback yep. and as far reading, as that goes yeah reading other people's writing also helps you mm-hmm. recognize when you do the same thing yep. mm-hmm. or yep. Or yeah, the more... ideas, yeah, gives you techniques you can steal. Yeah, it's, it, it's a lot easier to find those things in someone else's work, and so the mm-hmm. more pro- the more practice you have doing that, the better you may be able to look at your own work critically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. So there's some things that have occurred in this hour, and some things that have not occurred. Um, so <laughs> I'm afraid we're going to have to do another hour of this. And mm-hmm. everybody, <laughs> buckle buckle up. Um, buckle up, Samantha. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, here's the deal. It is uh, it is three o'clock on the nose <laughs> Pacific, and you know, did we? Is it is it just been such a wild ride that I forgot <laughs> whether or not we talked about what's been released in the Green Ronin store? Oh, uh, we have not yet. Uh, nope. We last week at the end of the week we released Into the Idiot Box uh, mm-hmm. uh, by Jason Healy today. Oh, was Indeed. that today? I thought yeah, it was last week. it's live right oh. now, and we're going to tweet some stuff about it, but it, you, it is there, and if you didn't yeah, uh, catch that um, Mutants and Masterminds Monday, it is a hoot. Right? Yep. It is a ton of fun. It, is it involves a, it Muppets. Is. Uh, <laughs> it, it involves Muppets and 80s TV. What's there not to love? Right? You fly That a Muppet segment was my favorite one. <laughs> <laughs> C is for crush. <laughs> I'm thinking C is for cocaine in this particular instance, but I'm not here to judge. No, that was a different TV show. You right? Oh, that's right. They, they were all fantastic, though. It was so much fun. Jason is a treasure. Uh, what a joy, <laughs> what a, a super joy. Um, and uh, so, what else we have cooking? We did we did touch a bit on uh, on the Patreon. Things are cooking over there. You're gonna want to mm-hmm. go to uh, uh, Patreon.com slash mutants a n d masterminds check it out mm-hmm. you know we have got everyone gets a little something and and if you yeah. you know uh hang around long enough you get a little more and uh, just yeah. keeps on uh, coming we've got yeah at this point we're releasing uh one updated villain stat block a week mm-hmm. and every other week we're also releasing a new mutants and masterminds related article sometimes it's something related to earth prime sometimes it's related to the villains we're releasing uh the next one coming up is going to be an update for the scion family for where are they now because you asked for it yeah it's we're actually calling it the cork up the shans you know like appease the shans but uh troy (laughs) in a good way in a good way like in a good way (laughs) uh but we do love you here's the thing too the shans often and i oh it hurts to say this but they're rarely (laughs) wrong I, it okay, is. Troy, no. <laughs> oh, no, I've done it. I've unleashed the power of the Sean. 
Mm -hmm. Um, You know, Matthew Tyler, I'm going to answer this question because I don't want you to sit here for the next five days until we get back here to do this again to answer (laughs) the question. But regarding upcoming products, will we ever and ever, as capital, all caps, uh, see an astonishing adventure showcasing one of the teams from the Super Team Handbook, Pharaoh Berg, for the outliers, Um, the upstarts, the who, the why hmm, you have it. I mean... As in using one of those teams as the as a pre existing team for the players? Yeah, or what are you talking about, Matthew? I Yeah, because we don't usually do adventures for mm-hmm. specific heroes per se. So Yeah. That would be an unusual departure. Yeah. We did the one specific adventure where it's expected somebody plays seven, but right. the rest is and kind was... of left wide open. Right. And that was sort of a flashback prequel. Mm-hmm. Well, so Matthew, I know that you're, you're probably furiously typing up some information to clarify that, and I want you to post it because that means you're going to have to keep repeating it over and over until we're back again because we have to release. We don't want to. We want to talk some more. We want to have dialogue. Samantha, what a joy. I mean, really a very yes. interesting, uh, illuminating, uh, you know, uh, it's not just sort of uh, uh, crushing dreams and uh, crossing the <laughs> and dotting on it. Like, it, it's, it's deep, no. and I, I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, Thank you. I had a great time. So I, I well, nice. come back for more editing questions <laughs> sometime. You know, we um, should do editor's corner. <laughs> but, but it's not with corner, all it's of the corner. free time we have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll have you pop in and we'll it'll be called the editor's corner. And you can just talk about all of the egregious things that you were. That'll be all the postmortem work. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the best. <laughs> yeah, here are all the parts I removed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was an uh, absolute joy. Um, Crystal, uh, do you have anything that you would like to share? Uh, any I kind do, of big news? but I'm, I'm just going to say really quick, uh, this coming June, my new book, Gamma Flight, will be coming from Marvel Comics. Fight? What? So please pre-order that at your friendly local comic book shop. So when do we get to like officially call ourselves like the entourage? Like, what is that? Is what have always been the entourage? What are you talking about? I'm, I'm <laughs> writing one mini series. I'm not a big deal. Yeah, you are. But I'm just saying, I want to. I want the actual job. Like, I mean, I know we're always the entourage, but I just want. I can't like, afford uh, to pay you, Troy. From now on, you will be introducing Marvel's Crystal Frazier. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to put a whole list of like, it's going to be like Daenerys. Like, there's just going to be so many. Like, <laughs> maker of content, creator of joy, yes. like all this, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, very funny, all that stuff. Everybody's saying you know congrats. What? Steve, I'm going to make you responsible for Troy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I'm here for it. Um, Steve, <laughs> what do you have cooking? What are some things that, uh, that you can share with our, our fans? What should they be checking out? So uh, I am, in addition to playing in Alex's game next week, oh, yeah. uh, I am uh, going to be game mastering uh, a game of Blue Rose for uh, NorwestCon uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, uh, first weekend in April. Uh, and they are going to be streaming a bunch of uh, uh, games from Green Renin, uh, including uh, Modern Age and The Expanse. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm also going to be running Blue Rose live on uh, on Twitch, so uh, it should be a good time. Folks should uh, check out NorwestCon's uh, site uh, and uh, take a look at what we've got coming up. Uh, it should be a good time. That rolls out on the first, and guess what? The first is a Thursday. Ooh, and so opening the the whole thing with a particularly. Mm popular um uh disembodied voice and the you know kind of popular and wildly popular and well-loved owen casey stevens so we're gonna do thursday age we're gonna kick it off a one hour early on the first not a joke um it will be <laughs> super super fun um samantha again thank you for coming do you have something you'd like to share i mean i, I think you've inspired a lot of people here who have been like i needed a good editor and you know uh, <laughs> um where can they find your uh, your rate sheet and you know all of that good stuff <laughs> yep so i'm online at samantha chapman editing um and i am also on facebook as the same name um s- mostly on facebook i just post like memes and and pictures of things that are misspelled so it's a good time yeah definitely definitely uh hit me up reach out i i'm currently looking for work so if anybody needs an editor that'd be wonderful 
what an opportunity um uh, the thoughtfulness and the the way that you approach editing is really sort of like a um you are a word doctor you're a, you're a writer you're a writer <laughs> i want to help of, yeah yeah <laughs> writer, healer. Uh, i really appreciate it uh hey chat we have such a good time hanging out with you um uh, you know we really have a blast and a lot of our opportunities to interact with you improves the things that we do in the way that we do it uh if you're sitting on an idea you have a hope a dream um you want to have us focus on a thing um for instance our friends on reddit we're talking about how they kind of would love a, a little segment where we get a little crunchy with some of the data and or some of you know kind of how to get a certain thing done and uh mm -hmm. so we welcome those thoughts and uh we want to uh thank you mocking dragon uh samantha chapman that, that's me oh that's you. <laughs> <laughs> i love it i'm just effusively praising you to your face and also digitally um <laughs> uh absolutely uh friends uh reach out to us we we read everything and we do ignore some things um <laughs> and try and then the sean's you know just blow the lid off the thing and anyway but send a note to let's play at green and what we'll do is incorporate it into the uh, into the program if we can and if it's something that is uh rude then i just take it with me to my therapist and it's really <laughs> Hey, um, thanks again, Samantha. Always a pleasure, Crystal, Steve, everybody else. Troy. We'll see you Thursday. Age. Um, that's at 2 o'clock on the 25th with Owen Casey Stevens, and then we'll follow up with some mm -hmm. fun on the 1st. Mm -hmm. And March. Looking forward to it. All right. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you okay. so much okay. for making time for like, us. And March, goodbye. No, I was going to say March 29th <laughs> is when we're doing our game with uh, Alex, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <gasps> it is okay good uh, yeah that's a, a good callback we've got some uh we're gonna share yes. some uh stuff that uh, uh that he put together some digital stuff it's beautiful like a uh, marketing thingies words and stuff on a thing i don't know i need it i see i need that live <laughs> editors we have it. come on um but uh, with that being said we shall now depart uh again thank you everybody but good bye everybody for now